So I think the main criticism that's an easy criticism, I don't know that it's a completely accurate criticism, is obviously nine points on the board. And then if anybody knows anything of what happened, there were some, you know, goal to goal situations that needed to be cashed in on. Um, yep. Then it's easy. Then if you watched a little bit of the game, at least, or those situations to say too conservative. Uh, the overall game plan, most people look when they talk conservative game plans, they look at run pass ratio. Mm -hmm. That certainly wasn't the case. They put it up 41 times in a game that was generally tied, roughly tied one score game, did become a two score game for a little bit in the third quarter. Uh, but in those situations, do you think they were too conservative? Absolutely. Um, a hundred percent. Just, uh, yeah, if you're going to lean on Texas A&M, which we could have because we were averaging five and a half. I mean, it was seven yards of carry for a while, you know, yeah. and it ended up at Miami is the away team and it ended at 4.9 for the game. But Tyler Van Dyke had a couple of negatives in there, yeah. um, you know, but you're talking five yards of carry, man. That's. You know, that's that's good business in the run game, you know, and that's if you're looking for a positive or something, you know, like I said, I'm not going to debate you if you're looking for that silver lining. That's a, a big step forward for where Miami was against a top tier, physical, talented, large team, unable to run the ball forever. And then Crystal Ball and Mirror Ball come here and I mean, five yards of carry. But if you're going to lean on them, lean on them. You know, if you're just throwing the ball to throw it, why? You know, if if the path to victory, for whatever reason you decided was, you're going to take the ball out of Tyler Van Dyke's hands and make him a game manager because we don't have any receivers, uh, you know, of note on the team. We're going to run the ball and pick our spots to, you know, throw it 15 times. Then run the damn ball. But, like, then you just have this un- you, you, you mirror Jimbo in the inside the tent there, you know, you're at a snail's pace. They're packing it. They're, you know, packing the box. They're walking up the linebackers and the safeties and saying, we're all run blitzing figured out. And you just run dive into that. You try to run power a couple of times, you know, pulling the backside guard to the play side. He didn't even get there, you know, because they're, they're just crashing everybody from the second and third levels inside the box. Right. So I get that you want to run power, but you can't even get to the point of setting the blocks to run power. It was so frustrating. And then it just, you, you didn't even consider throwing the ball. You, again, you could have run a smash route. I just saw, I was watching replays of games. Minnesota was inside the 10, and they're running a slower tempo than anybody in America. And they have a higher success rate rushing. They're one of two teams. The other being Michigan, like I talked about in my piece a couple weeks ago, that has a higher success rate rushing than Miami. They came into the you know in uh, you know into a, a tight space. Now it was against Colorado, who I know is terrible, but they ran smash, and Tanner Morgan puts one to the corner. Boom! That's a touchdown. Why are we not running that on first down? You know what I mean? Or so, like at least try. And that's where to me. When it was 17 to three, you ran it three times in a row and settle for a field goal inside the 10 yard line. Come on, bro. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It was, it was way too, way too conservative. They took the air out of the ball. We're moving the ball. We had 140 more yards offense than they did. You know, if you look at just the stats, we dominated the game. We held the ball more. We ran it better. We had more tags for loss sacks. Hit their quarterback 12 times. Tyler Van Dyke got hit five times, didn't get sacked. You know, we didn't really have negative plays. Like, if you look at everything, um, but the conservatism inside the 10 was really, really, really frustrating. Really frustrating. And I know that, you know, and, and I, I said this as I watched the game, they tried to dial up some shots a couple times. The thing about it was, a and M was like, cool. We're just going to play cover three on top. You know, anytime that it looks weird or we get the feeling that maybe something's up, you know, you'd run the flea flicker 
try to get Keyshawn from the right side on a skinny po or a post, but they're playing three high. So then you hit Michael Redding on the over route there. Cool. You run something similar later in the game and try to hit him on an over. Tyler Van Dyke missed that throw. Uh, and that was, ended up being a turnover on, well, not turnover on downs on that one, but we ended up punting. You know, you get Henry Parrish one-on-one with a slow linebacker on third and nine on that drive that was 17-3. to three. And that drop was so massive. That's a first down. And if he makes a play, like he can make a play, and we've seen him make a play both at Miami and at Old Miss, Henry Parrish might score on that. And it's, I'm not saying that he would have walked in. Because there's another defender there with the guy going, you know, one on one to the end zone, things like that. But you know, that was another one. They tried the they hit the wheel route to Elijah Royo um, off of play action. They tried another one up the right sideline to Jacoby George that uh, was well defensed. Uh, and there was another. I mean, and I know that I'm only naming four and five and six plays, but there were times that what was called was aggressive. But what ended up happening because of the coverage on defense was not as aggressive a thing. Sometimes you got to check the ball down, you know, but it after I think that those, you know, I think that he had a, uh, I don't know if it was a ratio or a budget, you know, like, hey, we're going into Toys R Us, KB Toys. You can get two toys kind of a thing. Don't ask me about no more than two. That's it. Pick your two and get your two. I think that that was Josh Gaddis's mandate or Mario Cristobal's mandate to Josh Gaddis uh, on Saturday. I said, look, you're going to get out of, geez, how many offensive plays? I mean, the ratio probably could have gone up if we were more seven explosive. Yes, yeah, 77 offensive plays. Yeah, I would say probably less than one in 10. Like one out of every 10 plays that we have, you can dial something up. Yeah, I mean, that actually probably works out to about seven. Yeah. So I would say, bro, yeah, every 10 plays, you get one. That's it. Um, you know, and it just wasn't, uh, we just needed a little bit more explosion, like I've been talking about. And, the, and this is exactly what I was talking about. When you get down close inside the 10 and everything gets real tight there, that five yards of carry ain't five yards anymore because them safeties and linebackers are coming up. You know what I mean? And yeah, you just got to find ways to be more productive and efficient and adding back some of that explosion. I mean, you saw Devin O'Shane with a 25 yard touchdown reception with four missed tackles, but you get a guy in space with, and I said this wrong last week, 10 2 in the 100 speed. You know, he makes a guy miss. Da, da, da. But again, Henry Parrish catches that ball, has all kinds of room. You know, some other guys catch some balls. I mean, the last offensive play of the game was, I mean, I know it was a contested, you know, square in or, you know, crossing route uh, past the sticks on fourth down, but it was just a straight drop. You know, you can't have those things. So, yeah. 